They call me Dr. Susan Block. I'm a sex therapist. That's my day job. On Saturday nights, I'm the mistress of the airwaves and I host a show. I'm also a bonobo advocate. I have a philosophy of peace through pleasure that is inspired by the bonobos that I call the bonobo way. I first encountered bonobos in 1994. It was a PBS special called The Nature of Sex, a fascinating special on animals of all kinds and how they had sex. And the very last episode showed me these creatures that looked just like me. Well, hairier and longer arms and you know, bigger ears somewhat. Um, and yet they really looked like me. And there they were playing and swinging through the trees and having sex. And of course this special had shown all the animals having sex, so that wasn't unusual. But what was, was the different types of sex that they would have. Uh, all types of positions and also massage. I mean, really sensuous activities. And when they would have sex, it, it just seemed like they were making love. These bonobos I was learning were over 98% genetically similar to humans, closer to us than any other species, genetically speaking. But then what won me over was to discover that it's not just how they have sex, but how they use sex that is quite remarkable. Bonobos seem to use sex to diffuse violent tension. They make each other feel good. They're all about calming each other down. And I think they have a lot to teach us because of the closeness that we have to them. They are highly endangered. They need our help to survive extinction. And I think that they can help us in return to learn a little bit about peace through pleasure so we don't blow ourselves up. I just say we should be inspired by them. Just like we are inspired by the angels, why not be inspired by the animals that are so close to us, but that have somehow figured out a way <laughs> to live in peace. Pleasure has a value. The bonobos show us several values of pleasure. Uh, pleasure brings us together, and we as a species are meant to be together. A lot of us primates, we're not loners. We need to be together. When we're alone, we go crazy. You need to connect with the physical side of love, which is touch, lust, sexuality. It doesn't always have to be sexual intercourse. I mean, the bonobos show us that sexuality is a lot more than sexual intercourse. They really don't spend that much time on sexual intercourse, a few seconds. But they spend a lot of time on what we call foreplay, all this massage, all this kissing. I mean, the kissing is insane. They, they just tongue kiss and they just love to play and touch and feel and hug and roll around and, you know, it's, it's what we would call very rambunctious foreplay. Touch and pleasure does help to relax the primate nervous system. Every religion has doctrine that separates humans from animals. And, and even the religion of science separates humans from animals in that, you know, we build skyscrapers and they don't. So there are definite differences amongst us, just like there are differences between men and women and, and Americans and French. But the soul, the soul is not about the intellect. 
And the soul is not about the body, really. The soul is some, some essence, you know. Um, if we've got it, they've got it. When bonobos look into each other's eyes, they've got to see that soul connection that we see when we look into each other's eyes. And certainly when I look into the eyes of a bonobo, as I have been privileged to do a few times, they look right at you. And you see yourself, you see your reflection. And what are you seeing? In part, you're seeing anthropology, the history, all the science. I think in part you're also seeing our soul connection with our fellow creatures that for me is not fully explained by science. I haven't found an organized religion that really defines it, but it's there. And we who love our animals, we know it's there. Can I hear an amen? amen. amen. Can I hear an amen? Amen. I have this belief, it's in me from my childhood. And yet the characters just don't ring true. The God character, um, even the goddess. Somehow it seems to me that there's something more, more all encompassing, maybe less human. For me, the most important thing is love. You know, I, I'm, I'm, an, I'm a needy little sucker. I need a lot of love. <laughs> and I try to give it as well. I love Jesus. I mean, I'm not a Christian, but I love Jesus because Jesus said God is love. God is love, and I agree. And I happen to think, in my definition, that he in was including love on the physical plane. God's in everything, right? So God is in the orgasm, certainly. That's why we say, oh God, oh baby, oh God, because we're feeling it, feeling him inside of us. We are angel and animal, and, and that's who we are. As you stare far at a star, are we who we think we are? 100%, 99%, the secret's locked up in the secret jar. sand of a shore we don't know anymore as we watch the curtain close monkey see monkey do i'm that monkey how about you learn to live you gotta live a lot time is a train it's hot to trot monkey see monkey do i'm that monkey how about you gotta live gotta live a lot time is a train